The San Francisco 49ers put together a little whooping of the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football in Mexico City. How good are those 49ers? And might there need to be a change at the top for the Arizona Cardinals in 2022 and certainly before 2023? What about the potential benching of Zach Wilson? Uh, some great comments post game from Robert Sala about his young quarterback. We're opening up the the Peacock and Williamson mailbag here, questions about rookie receivers, Travis Kelsey's place in history, all that and more coming up right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. That's where most of the mailbag questions will come in our Twitter Tuesday episode today. You can also drop a comment on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed up. Hit the thumbs up and the bell notifications and all of those things. Tell a friend about the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making us your first listen. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. Matt, let me put it to you this way. I might be a little bit too close to the fire here. Yeah. Uh, someone who covers the San Francisco 49ers. Now that we've seen 11 weeks of football and we saw the 49ers beat up on the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football, are the San Francisco 49ers great or the greatest team in the NFL? <laughs> not the greatest, but not far off, in my opinion. I mean, I look at Dallas and the Niners and think, they could go into Philly and win, you know, I mean, they could go to the Super Bowl. They could win the whole thing, you know, where I thought it was kind of a three horse race before Bills, Chiefs, you know, um, and Eagles. I, I think there's some other teams in the AFC that are starting to percolate a little bit as well in a good way, but none more so than your Niners. I mean, this was a dominant game and I watched every snap, of course, and never thought it was in doubt really from the start. And especially, you know, once he got into a couple drives in. Yeah. Jimmy's just point guarding it out there. And I think that some of the stat lines are very interesting and tell a lot of story about this particular team in that Jimmy threw 29 passes. They ran the ball 28 times, you know, balance. And mm -hmm. I understand some, a lot of that's with the lead, but that's great. But Mitchell gets nine carries. McCaffrey gets seven. You know, I mean, like uh, balance. The receivers. McCaffrey and Sam will each catch seven balls. Kittle has four, but two touchdowns. Ayuk has two, but two touchdowns. Like, who's stat? I mean, all the stat lines are nice. You know, I mean, it's all complimentary. It's all unselfish, you know, and there's just so many ways to attack, and Jimmy point guards the whole thing. Yeah, and the unselfishness, the the vibe, too. Everybody's yeah. celebrating with each other after each individual's touchdown. And it's hard to navigate for Kyle Shanahan with that many weapons, getting everybody involved. And that's by far the best I've seen them be able to do that, you know, putting up 38 points and getting everybody a little bit. I you only has two catches, but they're both for touchdowns. I, uh, you know, right. like you mentioned, um, George Kittle only Kittle. gets four catches, but two of them are touchdowns. And so uh, high impact from all of the playmakers and Jimmy Garoppolo, Phil, facilitating all of it playing as good as he has probably probably his best game as a san francisco 49er playing free playing loose you started to see signs of that already this year once he entered the picture again um even before the 49ers traded for christian mccaffrey and the mccaffrey deal i think was more psychological than anything in a lot of ways because as you mentioned like he's not out producing eli mitchell on the ground no he's not getting crazy you know receiver usage but it's almost like a, a glue piece. And I, and I wonder if Garoppolo feels. He kind of fills he, in every blank. Yeah, exactly. You know? Fills in all the holes. And I think Garoppolo probably feels like he doesn't have to force anything because he knows he has an elite check down option too. And the 49ers with Kyle and, and Jimmy, 
I don't know which one of it is, maybe both of them together. They haven't been a big running back check down team throwing your, they've thrown the ball to their running backs an insane amount more than they had before. So maybe that was just a missing element from the offense anyway. So uh, really interesting to see how all the weapons were used. And that's a scary team with how good they play defense. It's the third week in a row that D'Amico Ryan's defense has pitched a shutout in the second half. So uh, yeah, I did. Niners, good. Go ahead. I, I didn't saying? mean to overlook the defense because they're flying around the ball and Bosa yeah. and Warner and all. I mean, they're as good as ever. It's a top three, maybe top one defense. But I like that angle you mentioned there about McCaffrey because one of mine and everyone's complaints about Jimmy over his career is he'll go linebacker blind from time to time in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. And maybe now it's, well, if you're not sure, dump it to Christian. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and there's actually – because. Garoppolo has always had that, you know, very quick trigger and he's got such a fast release, gets the ball out in under two and a half seconds. He's about 2.65 seconds this year. So actually a little slower. So he's actually holding the ball more. So I think there is part of that where he's looking for a bigger play, a little bit more second reaction plays, getting out, making throws. Um, you know, he's healthier than he was last year down the stretch for sure. Maybe he's going through one more oh, progression that he wouldn't have. Yeah. Last year, and, you know? and maybe knowing that he's got that outlet of Christian McCaffrey allows him to, to hold on to the ball, tick longer, not force something underneath where he was maybe forcing something that was supposed to be there that was designed to be there but it wasn't because so many guys are playing the robber coverage and jumping that short to intermediate jumping those dig routes in the 49ers offense so he's taken in i think a big part of that was the or the, the perfect example of that was the george kittle touchdown where jimmy stepped up kittle breaks off goes up the field and gets a big you know touchdown throw right so, right um and of course, the after team. the catch stuff's off the chart. And then the after, yeah, yeah, yeah right, then right, you right. have everything else that these guys are doing, you know, once Jimmy gets them the ball. Mm-hmm. Seeing Debo, you know, go ham on, on one of those carries too. So tons of balance. And when the 49ers are playing like that, it's pretty scary. Want to see them put that together against one of the better teams in the NFL because they've had a chance to beat out, uh, beat up on a couple of really down NFC West teams right now in the Rams and the Cardinals. And you have to start questioning, Matt, I think with the Arizona Cardinals, if is Cliff the right guy? And is, is 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 I was questioning at the end of that game. It kind of even looked like the Cardinals didn't want to tackle at the end of the game. And once you see players start to quit, if you're an owner up in the box and you're in prime time, and the rest of the league is watching your squad and your team is quitting. Um, I, I was even questioning if Cliff was going to land in the states with the job still. Yeah, I think it was Aikman that said that. I can't remember who the announcers were. I think it was Aikman. He said. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you're just going to let him run right down the sidelines late in this game and not even throw a shoulder at him or anything, Mm -hmm. you know, like, wow. And and I'm rough on Kyler, but I don't really regret it. You know, they kept flashing to him and never once did I see him like in Colt's ear or with Cliff. He's just sitting there with his do rag on doing his own thing, you know, like not engaged, just doing his own thing. It's like that this team needs a shakeup, man. They're, Mm -hmm. They're in a bad spot and they're only getting worse. And we always know, I mean, Kingsbury teams going back to Texas Tech, which I can't comment on. I have no clue what he how he built his Texas Tech teams. But yeah. second half of the season's never good. I mean, the best has probably come already for this team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it must be we've seen it in the past already with the Arizona Cardinals under Cliff Kingsbury. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes. Um, at this point, I'd be kind of shocked to not see a shakeup. Might not happen now, but maybe it'll happen right. before Week 18 when these two teams meet again. Week 17. Week 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah, week 18. Okay. Yep. Final week of the season. Um, next, Matt, we've got a bunch of really good questions in the hopper here. Um, with how good Jimmy Garoppolo is, there's a few names that were thrown out as the best quarterbacks in the NFC right now. And it's accurate and equal parts shocking, I think, by, by one of our listeners. We've got uh, questions about Zach Wilson. Is it time for the Jets to move on from their former number two overall pick from just last season. And is Travis Kelsey the greatest tight end of all time? We'll get to all of that and more coming up. But first, a word from our sponsors. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, whenever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., the UK, Canada, and coming soon to Australia. Here's how it works. All you do is you book the car you want. Say uh, a minivan. You want to go on a family road trip, a big spacious SUV. You can find a host that has that car available and you're off and running. How about a classic or luxury car for a special event or a birthday? Just a one-off where you want to roll up in style. You can find that classic or luxury car from a host at Turo. 
Maybe you just need an economy vehicle, something on a budget. You just need to get from point A to point B, run some errands. You need some extra wheels one day. You can find that as well at Turo. Maybe you want to test drive that new electric vehicle. See how those feel to drive and really, really have a car all day and know what it's like to drive one of these new cars before you buy. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed <laughs> by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It is the easiest daily fantasy you can play. You can pick as few as two players for this particular daily fantasy with Price Picks. And all you're doing is playing against the Price Picks projection. If you pick two to five players and they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry. You're not competing against other people. You're not competing against a huge pool of sharks or players against you in the fantasy world. You're not even putting together a full fantasy team. It's only two to five players. That's how easy it is. And you're playing against the projections available at prize picks. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch as well. Not just NFL, although there's a ton of projections on every game that you can pick more or less than, but how about NBA, NHL, PGA, college sports, motor sports, combat sports, you name it. You can find it every day at prize picks entries made in less than 60 seconds it is that easy safe and fast withdrawals and currently operational in over 30 states including canada so download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com and play daily fantasy sports first time users can receive a 100 instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on so if you deposit 100 dollars, prize picks will give you 100 more dollars to play with if you deposit 50 prize picks will give you 50 don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to you one hundred dollars is it time for robert sala to sit zach wilson down it's a lot to unpack here and i wanted to talk even more about it yesterday this game all the above um i'm glad this was a good this is a question a lot of people talking about wilson because i'm gonna steal this from mike lombardi real quick i was listening to his podcast this morning and i wasn't glued to that game but <laughs> Lombardi with his Belichick background really got into this game and basically was saying, I'm going to do everything possible to stop the run. And boy, is this guy a joy to play against because he screws up the easiest of things, you know, and Nate Tice calls him a trick shot shot artist. And what I think he means by that is like Zach Wilson's playing horse, but really it's a three on three game with his buddies. Like here's just a shot at a, a 10 foot jumper. And he's saying, well, I'm going to call a swish and throw it over my head, you know, like, or shoot it from the third row. Like the easy stuff he makes hard. His fundamentals are getting worse real quick on that game. And this is from Lombardi because it's dead on is he said when the game, when they, when they kicked, when they punted the ball to Jones, the game, the play that they lost the game on Lombardi lost his mind. He said, there's only one thing that can beat you when you punt this ball, and that's a return for a touchdown. Why on earth did you not punt that out of bounds? Balachek would punt that out of bounds a thousand out of a thousand times. And that's just the finer little may, – it maybe only hurts you 1% of the plays, but you don't punt it right down the middle of the field to a good punt returner or any punt returner, even if it's me back there. That's a small little thing, but that separates Belichick from Sala, you know, at this stage of their careers. And is that the only reason they lost? Of course not. But so what do you do? Wilson seems immature. He's not taking responsibility. It doesn't look like he's putting in the work to get fundamentally better. And clearly they're a better football team when he's not in there. So I think you have to make the change. And you're a six win team. You're in it. If you're, you're the in Jets. it and yeah. you may, and actually even with Wilson, your win loss record isn't bad, but he was clearly mm -hmm. the top reason why you, you lose this game, you know, that and a one single punt return, but it shouldn't even have to come down to that right. rough punt return, you know, if you are the Jets. And seeing him, you mentioned the mechanics. He's like off his back foot, sling. Like they're trying right. to dumb it down to make the throws as easy as possible. He can't even throw a stinking screen pass. He's sailing it 10 feet over guys' heads, throwing off his back foot, trying to wing it. I, I don't even know what the guy's doing. You got to sit him down. You've got to almost start from scratch again with Wilson because even at his best he hasn't played good football and hasn't shown the signs that other quarterbacks from his class have shown and to me it's it's a no-brainer and if you're starting to lose the locker room as a head coach you're Robert Sala then you start to take that temperature you absolutely have to set him down 
Yeah, his numbers under pressure are awful. You know, even before this game, um, that that was a problem coming in because he never was under pressure at BYU. You know, a bunch of twenty-eight year olds blocking for him or whatever. Um, I, I think you have to. I mean, it, it it doesn't send the right message to the team that this is okay, and and not that Flacco and others are great, but it gives you a better chance to win. Looking at another question here from Cody, and this is sort of, uh, we've talked a little bit about this, and this is a different idea than the question we were asked about who's going to be the great quarterbacks in the league in three to five years. Cody asks, is the NFL a season or two away from having a real quarterback issue? Old veterans Mm -hmm. retiring, younger guys not showing they are developing. There's a couple of guys that I think have started to look a lot better. Justin Fields is one of those, but this was supposed to be the season that was sort of the changing of the guard. We're seeing some of the old players that were the old pro bowlers not play as well. Um, you know, Rodgers, Brady, Wilson, all those guys are stocked down right now, but we haven't seen enough of the replacement of those star right. quarterbacks and maybe that's why a lot of the scoring is down this year in the NFL. Yeah, I, I think we might be the start of it. I mean, I forget what word he used, catastrophe or whatever. I mean, that might be a little strong. Everyone's still going to watch. It's still going to be a great product. But passing numbers are down. Scoring's down. You know, just the viewing factor, in my opinion, is a little bit down. The product's not as fun to watch as it used to be. Anyone that plays fantasy knows that, you know, fantasy points are harder to come by than they've ever been. Um, and unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, I, I don't have a strong feeling on this, that a lot of the young guys, quarterbacks are very feet reliant. Will their arms ever catch up? You know, Fields is a perfect example. You know, I mean, he can't do this forever. You know, I mean, will he take the next step as a pocket passer as many have before him or not? Um, but I, I harp on this a lot. I mean, the, the guys that should be in their prime, um, there's not a a group, you know, who's a little older than Mahomes and Allen, but younger than Stafford. That's a top notch player. Not many. I mean, I think Dax in that neighborhood, but it's hard to find guys. And I always come back to luck. Luck would be that guy, but he's, he's Wilson's class and Wilson's fallen off. And the, all the Wences and Mariota's and Goff's and all those guys that got picked early never hit. It's fascinating. How about this uh, on the same token, talking about quarterbacks uh, from one of our listeners. Is... Oh, before we do, can I throw one thing out? Sure. I wanted to mention this with Wilson and it ties into quarterbacks overall. Okay. When Odell made that catch, the one handed catch, every kid in America's dad throwing over my head so I can try to make the Odell catch. I think there's a Mahomes effect to the quarterbacks coming in the league too, that Wilson's the perfect example of, fundamentals who needs fundamentals i have a big arm i can make plays you know like that could be a big problem going forward not only that they're so people teams missed on mahomes because they didn't know what to do with them because that's not the the way that you know they were taught as coaches coaches right right, right, right. i don't know how this is going to play coming from that offense you know air raid to the nfl hasn't really had a great track record some of the throws he's winging is that really going to play in the nfl then Mahomes is so good now teams are like oh okay that's okay so that's we're going to be impressed now when we see this and then someone like zach wilson comes out and then you get sort of duped by the trick shot level of it right right right. wait a second he was actually missing some of the other things where we overlooked you know so it's like the opposite way of overlooking uh, a, a quarterback in, in evaluating a quarterback. So it's sort of fascinating there where you still have to be able to do the fundamental things, which someone like Patrick Mahomes absolutely can, and he can take the free stuff, but he can make all these extra plays. And right now we're seeing a lot of these young quarterbacks that even if they, you know, could do some fun stuff at their pro day, they're not taking the the free candy. Right. I mean, Kyle Bowler throwing it a million yards from his knees. Mm-hmm. Do we really care about that? I mean, in the reality, if he can't hit an out route, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but how about this one? With uh, the way Jimmy Garoppolo is playing right now, is he among the top three quarterbacks in the NFC with Jalen Hurts and Geno Smith? Garoppolo, Hurts, wow. Geno Smith are those the three best quarterbacks right now in the NFC? And I think there's an argument that that is very accurate. And also, it would be mind blowingly shocking to make that to hear myself make that statement six months ago. That's mind-blowingly shocking for sure. It's a conversation. I can't put Rodgers there. Um, I can't put Kyler there. I wouldn't put Cousins in that conversation. I still think Brady's a good quarterback. Is he a transcendent take-a-team-over guy? Probably not. 
I'll be honest, though. I mentioned a minute ago, I might take Dak. I mean, he is very not flashy. They ran the Cooper Rush offense in Minnesota, but he is very cerebral and also has, they're starting to run him more. I think he's finally healthy. I think I would put a chip on Dak right now. And, you know, quarterbacks and sort of offenses as a whole and teams as a whole kind of go together. So you look at, mm-hmm. okay, if you were power ranking just the NFC and you've got to put the Philadelphia Eagles one, yeah, and it's Cowboys 49ers, right? And then maybe yeah, yeah. Right. Minnesota's still fifth, probably. Yeah. Minnesota, like Minnesota, even though they're, are they eight and two now? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this. They're you brought this up yesterday. They're plus they're they're minus. Potential is minus two, right? Because they got blown out by the Eagles, blown out by the Cowboys, which is and better than getting blown out by. The, it's better than getting blown out by the Texans, but right, yeah, exactly. But speaking of you know the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think are plus eleven, and they're a three win team team right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean Minnesota's wins are all very close, and their losses are blowouts. Fascinating stuff. Okay, is. Uh, next is Travis Kelsey. Not only the best tight end in the league, the greatest tight end of all time. That and more coming up to finish up this mailbag edition of Peacock and Williamson. BetOnline.net is your number one source for everything sports betting, stats, information, news, analysis. You got to be informed before you make your bets. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. At Bet Online, including a ton of lines and props and odds and Super Bowl odds and MVP and Rookie of the Year, next coach to be fired odds on the NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, soccer, esports. They've got it all covered at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those too at Bet Online. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Get over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. See all of the week 12 lines at Bet Online and all the way through week 18. And of course, maybe put your uh, money on the San Francisco 49ers to <laughs> the Super Bowl at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Got a question about rookie wide receivers, Matt. Uh, Wondering your thoughts on how those receivers have played this year. Would you care to rank... The yes. rookie wide receivers, a question from JDS, a frequent listener and tweeter into the show. Rank the rookie wide receivers. And by the way, before we do this, a one rookie wide receiver, Jameson Williams, who has not played yet for the Detroit Lions, has been designated for return off of IR. So maybe he Excited. will make a little bit of an appearance here before the end of his rookie year. Yeah, Lions won three in a row, bring him out. I mean, he was my favorite receiver in this class. So I haven't changed my opinion on him. I mean, the rest of the class, I've changed my opinion on all of them, although some have missed time as well. But I'm still going to say Williams won just because I adored him then. You know, if you if you said you could have your pick of who you take, I guess I would take Williams. But it's cloudier for me now because of the guys who played, Williams aside, I think the two Ohio State guys stand above everybody else. You know, yep. I think Wilson's going to be special. I think Alave is way better than I expected and is going to be a very, very good receiver. I've heard him compared to Stefan Diggs. I, I think that that's not insane. Ooh. So those two are tier one for me of the guys that have played. I have a tier two of Drake London, who unfortunately just doesn't put the numbers up because of they don't ever throw. And anyone that has Kyle Pitts in fantasy knows the pain there. And my guy Pickens. Uh, I mean, I think those two are next. Then I got a jumbled mess, and Watson, Burks, Dotson. I'd like Wandell Robinson, but he's out for the year, and he, we didn't see much of him, unfortunately. We're just starting to see a little of Sky Moore. I think Pierce is a keeper, and I have Dubs on this list as well. He'd probably be last for me. But unfortunately, Burks we haven't seen a ton of. Dotson we haven't seen a ton of. We're done on Robinson. We haven't seen hardly any of Sky. So I'm not avoiding the question, but most of it's an incomplete. Yeah, it's really hard. The The thing you would be able to do is say, okay, stamp 
X player with, okay, I, 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 I'm confident in this guy as being right. an NFL starting wide receiver and what he could be. I think you feel really good about Garrett Wilson. You feel really good about Drake London. Mm-hmm. Uh, you feel really good about Chris Olave. And then a lot of question marks beyond that. I think George Pickens, it's, Pickens yeah, he's supposed to be clear what he is. And he is definitely a certain style of not necessarily right. your you know jitterbug, get open, whip route guy. But, man, his ball skills going and getting it. Uh, he might be the best in this class. Yeah, I mean, the the 80s would love him. Just traditional X beating yes. man cover. You know what I mean? He doesn't do all the other little things. I think Pierce is going to be a really good player. Um, I like the class overall. I could see guys like Burks, Dotson having better second halves of the season going forward. You know, we already saw some splash from Burks last week. Seen a lot of splash from Christian Watson lately too. So I'm high on the class and I'm not avoiding the question, but there's two tiers and then a lot of, I don't know. If I had to put my money on the best one, just because Jamison Williams, you you can't know what he's going to be yet. And uh, I wouldn't have fought you on him being wide receiver one in the class coming in. Uh, I really love what I've seen from Chris Olave, but I think better quarterback play Garrett Wilson. might be. Mm -hmm. What if Wilson was in Green Bay and Watson wasn't? Yeah. He's probably rookie of the year. (laughs) You know what I mean? Wilson's hard to ignore. I think he's pretty special. Yeah, he is. Because he can do... Almost all the things all the other guys can do, but he's good at all of them. Rather good than all of them. You know, being a little bit, some of them are a little bit more one dimensional than than him. That's what yeah. that's what excites me a little bit after the catch, even too. You know, with with Garrett Wilson. I guess I slightly changed my answer that if I only got one, I'll take Wilson because I've actually seen him play in the NFL. Right? Yeah, Olave's been really impressive. Really good. That's really good too. And, and I love what I've seen there. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey, greatest tight end of all time, Matt. I was watching that game the other night and it, it dawned on me because I remember about a year ago I threw out there is Kelsey the greatest Chiefs tight end ever, which is pretty close to the same question with Tony <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think he is. I, th- I would put him over Gonzalez. So that really, to me, only leaves Gronk. Real quick, I'm an I'm a, I'm a NFL history buff and I have all the respect in the world for Mackie and Ditka, but I'm not going. The game was too different for me in the passing game to even include those guys. The 70s is kind of a wasteland of tight ends until like Winslow and Newsom and those guys arrived. Then the tight end position started to really grow. But I still think it's Gronk. Kelsey would be number two. I mean, first ballot Hall of Famer. It's so question. hard because you almost, it, Kelsey's almost to the point where you have to rank him against wide receivers and not tight ends mm-hmm. because of how his usage is. You know, he is a, he's a split out slot wide receiver. I mean, Gronk's 275 and right. one of the best blockers on the field. And he just caused more problems. Mm. But just as a receiving tight end, I would have no problem if you said Kelsey's number one. But I'll be I mean, this sounds extreme. But if you said, Williamson, we're having a draft of skill position offensive players, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends from the last 20 years, you the first pick in the draft. I think I'd take Gronk. Oof. He is a difference making player. Red zone blocker. Target hall matchups. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, over Julio and, you know, right. I would love to follow up with that, but we, uh, I'm we sure are out of time will today. Way to go. At Williamson NFL. Right. We, yeah. At Williamson <laughs> NFL. Way to go out on a, on a hot take. Matt Williamson, of course, more Peacock and Williamson coming up later this week. We're going to preview all the Thursday games. We're going to preview all the weekend games and give you some thoughts on what happened Thursday later in the week. Talk to you then right here, Peacock and Williamson.